lately I've been watching it on the news and reading internet news sites, and I keep hearing about wildfires in the United States and around the world. I also have been hearing of, about all the wildfires that are causing a lot of damage. So I thought to myself, why are there so many wildfires and how do they happen? In today's Stevage video, we'll investigate how wildfires start and their impact on our environment and our ecosystem. Before we dive into this topic, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel. Also, if you like my videos, you can share it with your family and friends. And if you like my videos, remember to drop a like down below. And now back to today's topic, wildfires. So what exactly is a wildfire? A wildfire is a large uncontrolled fire that spreads quickly and can cause damage to vegetation and communities nearby. Vegetation is a fancy word for a group of plants in a particular region or area. Usually, when wildfires start, people may not know about them until they become really large. Wildfires can last for a very long time. They can last for even days to even weeks. According to National Geographic, there are three different types of wildfires. There are crown fires, surface fires, and ground fires. Let's take a closer look at the three different types of wildfires. A ground fire is a type of fire that starts when roots and other materials beneath the soil catch on fire. A surface fire is when dry or dead vegetation on the ground begins to burn. And a crown fire is when a fire burns all the way up to the top of the trees. The top of the tree is often called the canopy. According to the National Park Service, crown fires are the hardest to put out. So how exactly do wildfires start? There are three key things that need to come together in order for a wildfire to start. Those three things are a heat source, a fuel source, and oxygen. A heat source is something that creates a spark. Heat sources can come from nature like the sun or lightning. Heat sources can also be man-made like matches or unproperly managed campfires. A fuel source is something that can burn when a spark is present, like grass, trees, and even something called brush, which is a type of plant or vegetation. When grass, trees, and other sources are really dry, it makes them even better fuel sources. Also, keep in mind that structures like houses and buildings are also fuel sources. Finally, oxygen is a gas that is present in the air. So how exactly do these three ingredients come together? A heat source can ignite a fuel source in the presence of oxygen. For example, after very dry conditions, lightning may strike a tree or other fuel source. The lightning strike may ignite the fuel source, which in the presence of oxygen may grow into a fire. Sometimes the heat source may come from a man-made item. For example, if a campfire is not completely extinguished, it may ignite a fuel source nearby and grow into a fire. In fact, over 90% of wildfires are started by human activity. So now that we know how wildfires start, let's talk about how they spread. There are three main factors that help a wildfire spread or grow larger. Those are number one, the fuel, number two, the weather, and number three, the terrain. Let's take a closer look at these three factors. Remember a little while ago I talked about fuel sources for wildfires? If you have a large amount of fuel sources like thick vegetation and trees that are dead or are very dry, this can help a fire grow rapidly and spread to surrounding areas and communities. The weather can affect how wildfires spread too. For example, wind can have impacts on fuel sources and can also cause a fire to spread. For example, in the western United States, there are warm, dry winds called the Santa Ana winds that typically happen in the fall. These winds blow over land which can dry out vegetation and also cause a wildfire to spread. The winds can also blow embers, which are small pieces of fire, to other locations, which can set nearby things on fire like vegetations and homes. Just to give you an idea 
of how strong the Santa Ana winds are, they can reach over 100 miles per hour, which can help fires grow rapidly. Additionally, long periods without rain can cause droughts, which can dry out fuel sources like grass, making them easier to ignite. Low humidity and high temperatures can make vegetation more combustible. The terrain or the physical features of the land, such as mountains, deserts, canyons, valleys, and hills, can also play a role in how quickly a wildfire spreads. For example, wildfires near sloped areas like a hill, canyons, and mountains can quickly become dangerous. This is because in a wildfire, warm air rises and can dry out the vegetation above the fire, which provides more combustible fuel, allowing for the wildfire to quickly move up a mountain. Now that we have learned a little bit about how wildfires spread, let's talk about the impacts of wildfires. There are a few negative impacts of wildfires. First, wildfires can cause air pollution. Wildfires can pollute the air with chemicals and greenhouse gases like carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, as well as other pollutants. The air pollution can reduce air quality both near the fire and also up to thousands of miles away. For example, in July 2021, fires in the western United States and Canada reduced air quality across the United States. That's right, the pollutants from the fire spread all the way to New York City and Washington, D.C. The smoke and ash from a wildfire have particles that can damage the lungs and cause eye irritation. Wildfires can also injure or kill people, including firefighters or residents of a community. And it can also destroy buildings, communities, and forests. While there are many negative impacts of wildfires, in some ways, fires can help the environment, especially if they are controlled. How, you might ask? Fires can help maintain the ecosystem of certain types of forests. Wildfires can help make space for new trees to grow. For example, some types of pine trees need fire in order to release new seeds. Also, if there haven't been forest fires in a long time, in some places, there is an increased risk of uncontrolled fires because of the overabundance of fuels. This is why sometimes fire officials may create controlled fires so wildfires don't happen. So now you know all about wildfires. Let's test your knowledge with a quiz question. According to disaster philanthropy, in the 2020 Australia wildfire season, about how many acres of land were burned? Is it A, 40 million acres, B, 42 million acres, C, 46 million acres, or D, 50 million acres? If you said C, you are correct. The answer is C, 46 million acres. So how large is 46 million acres? To put this in perspective, 46 million acres is just a little bit smaller than the country of Senegal in Africa. The 2020 Australia wildfire season was from September 2019 to March 2020. During this time, more than 3,500 homes and other buildings were destroyed, and over 34 people lost their lives. Thanks for joining me in this Debbie Jr. adventure. If you like my videos, remember to click the like button down below and share this video with your family and friends. Remember, also subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.